okay so okay so the question is okay is it going to be facebook that ultimately uh causes this to explode they're gonna they're gonna turn the switch and it's gonna go or what uh i i think that if if somebody is in a position today to really make video chatting take off it's facebook and it's multitude of numbers okay? yeah that's what i'm saying that's what i'm saying uh you, you know, I, I'm not a Facebook fan. I, I have an account. I've had an account for years, uh, I, and I'll say I'm going to use it. And after about two days of it, I get frustrated. Uh, uh, I've had a lot of people tell me it's my own fault that, you know, I need to tailor my notifications more to my taste, so forth, et cetera. Uh, I've, I've got quite a bit of friends on Facebook. Uh, but But for some reason... Uh, Google Plus and Hangouts has just worked for me. I've, I've met a lot of very interesting people, uh, and a lot of those people that I met that were strangers when I met them, now I've met them in real life. And, for example, uh, you know, George and Doug are people that I hang out with in tech and coffee. And, mm -hmm. and, and listen, uh, George is one of my best friends. You know, he lives in <laughs> Jacksonville. I'm in northeast Tennessee, though you can't tell it from my accent, I know. But, uh, <laughs> but I can't feel a damn thing, man. <laughs> but, but the point I'm trying to make is, is uh, uh, you know, I, I heard this slogan once, and I, I think it's it's true. It fits me. Uh, you know, uh, Facebook is for the people that I know, and Google is for the people that I want to know. Yeah, yeah. But again, it's. I just feel like maybe the, maybe I'm just imagining things. I feel it's in the air. Like I felt it when when uh, Hangouts first came out, and it just it just vanished. But I feel with this again that it's in the air. Like it like there's an opportunity here for something really cool, and it's just a matter of because I think maybe because of the phone technology has reached a point where yeah. you can do you can do Periscope or MeCat. Uh, it that has reached the point where that um, we can do something really, really cool with that. Shelton, Shelton I, I agree with you, too. Uh, I, I really like Blabs. Blabs are really good, but I prefer Hangouts. Let me put it that way. Let me put it this way. But with with Blabs, the, 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 the cool thing about Blabs is you're airing everything, okay? So be yeah. prepared to do – be prepared to have – like I said, Doug and Duke here, really great friends – you know, I can sit there and I feel like I'm at home with them when I'm in a hangout and which is kind of closed and we're sealed off and we're just talking our daily stuff here. You know, I'm not going to sit there and say, OK, you know, I'm not going to say anything personal to these guys because we're Aaron or, you know, we'd be airing dirty laundry out here, which really we're, we have none. But I'm just saying <laughs> there's, there's 11 people watching right now, basically. Uh, I exactly. don't mind. So there's I'm 11 people. Introvert. Probably Please only 10 of them I know. No, only kidding. Um, <laughs> but there's 11 people watching. So seriously, you know, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to sit there and say, um, by the way, Duke, um, you know, when you were over here last night, you left your thong. <laughs> it's a special one that has the tech and coffee, tech and coffee logo on it. He left the thong here. Now I'm not going to say that. Be oh, oh crap! I good. No. But anyways, because because in here, this would this is live out in public. This is a broadcast. Right. We're, we're actually talking, and other people are listening. In in a hangout, we can seal that off. We can have ten people, up to ten people, just talking amongst themselves, and nobody else is watching. Here, be prepared to. So it, it's, it's apples and oranges. So anybody who sits there and say, "Well, hangouts suck," well, hangouts are different. I don't give a crap. I like blabs. I like hangouts. Hangouts are better for me. Blabs are kind of cool too. Okay. I like uh, I like what Boost Moose has said in here. He's starting to get the impression that social live streaming is mostly just people talking about social live streaming. <laughs> that's, that's what we're talking about. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. But, but see, that, that's, with that's Cardonians right now. I'm only kidding. And, and uh, that, is, <laughs> that is the nature of any news medium. 
any new medium that's what they're going to do. They're going to talk about the medium because well, yeah, this is the new about. medium here, and I'll, that's what we're definitely going to talk about. We are going to. I'll tell you, I, I've, uh, George and George and Doug and I have a friend, uh, Bruce Turner, out of Lynchburg, Virginia, and, and Bruce does a lot of stuff with a uh, with a lot of this live streaming now. And and one of his biggest complaints, and I, I've done some testing myself. You mentioned Periscope and Meerkat. It's really frustrating to me if I if I go to broadcast live on either one of those platforms. What happens is, is the mic, the device mic is the only mic that I have access to. So what happens, and let's just say, for example, uh, I, I'm in a bar or, or I, I'm in any environment where there's a lot of noise around me. You know, if I had a Bluetooth mic, which, you know, that's pretty, that's pretty common. I wouldn't call that, you know, cutting edge tech. Uh, it would be really nice to be able to mount that microphone on my head and, and use it and eliminate a lot of that noise. Oh, yeah, I can see that. Thus far, those platforms aren't supporting that. And I find that very frustrating. And, and to be honest with you, I, I mean... I, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying they're bad platforms. I think they're pretty cool. And I can see, you know, like where Twitter has been popular with celebrities and politicians, you know, to be able to broadcast live like that with a lot of followers, I can see where that would be very appealing. And, but, I, and, and I, I don't mean to interrupt. I apologize. Um, cool. um, the thing I think, like I gave the example elsewhere, when it came to Periscope, what would be cool would be like to see like a Taylor Swift uh, concert from the point of view of a roadie. Like that would be like the show from a roadie's point of view, the, what goes on, that would be, that's the kind of thing where it would be really cool because you're showing an everyday kind of thing in a, in a different angle. And I think people would really enjoy that to be able, like any, any kind of thing, where it's like it's like an everyday kind of thing, but you're seeing it from an like an individual's different point of view. Uh, I I agree with that. You know, I I think and and don't get me wrong, I think platforms like this can be that. Okay, but uh, you know you know uh, I'll just give you an example. Uh, we've got in Google Plus, we have. Uh, I'm going to call it a permanent URL to get you into our hangout. Okay. And, uh, you know, we've got, uh, we've got people in Europe. We've got people all across America that I'm going to call regulars. Well, the real cool thing is I can access that from my mobile clicking on that permanent URL. And literally I can, I can hang out driving down the road in my truck. You know, yeah, with, with a Bluetooth, uh, with a Bluetooth, with a Bluetooth. <laughs> yeah, I've got, I've got a, a Bluetooth headset. Yeah, and and uh, uh, a noise canceling. So a lot of times I've got the window down, and they tell me it's not really bad on the wind noise. So, uh, uh, but you know, you know, that's the kind of versatility that that I would like to see more in a lot of these video chatting apps. And you know, I think Google has done a terrible job of promoting Hangouts. Yeah, I really why do. is that? That's <laughs> that's the uh, question I have. Why yeah, haven't they, they? But but they're trying now. I think a little bit by creating the page, but that's doing nothing really. They've gonna have to introduce an easier way to get into the video Hangouts and to see the live one. The people, the ones people want public. They're gonna I, have to I, do a better way of displaying this. You know, when uh, back in uh, I guess it was uh, probably the fall of 2011. When, when Hangouts were really coming into the whole Google Plus, uh, I'm going to call it short-lived ph phenomenon, okay? Uh, they had public Hangouts, and you could go. I mean, they were third-party apps. You could go and find public Hangouts and click on them. And, and listen, man, it was a nightmare. It was a circus because... You never knew what you were going to get. People were public who didn't want to be public. And uh, I I'm sorry, but there was a lot of half-naked Middle Easterners. Uh, <laughs> hey, a lot of penises. 
Honest to goodness. Yeah, I can expect that. I think I blocked about 70 people in that year and a half period. <laughs> So, so uh, I, the, the point that I'm trying to make is, is, uh, uh, you know, for it to be public, ever, everybody said it needed to be public. Okay. Well, let me tell you something. I was there when it was public and it wasn't a positive experience. Okay. <laughs> it was not a positive experience. <laughs> no. Um, well, I, yeah, that's true. But if you may, uh, and, and again, if, if uh, Google Hangouts have this already, I apologize. I, I haven't used it recently, so I don't know. Uh, but uh, if you were to make it uh, feature rich in a way that it was like really easy to block people, like just bam, you're gone. Um, would that, wouldn't that uh, weed out some of that problem? Because this is yeah. such a, this is such a, has such potential from a, a, a mainstream point of view. Well, uh, in, right, right now, right now we can do four people at a time. And the way that Google has done this is they've, uh, uh, you know, like uh, for example, if I wanted to block George, I could block him. And as soon as I did, George could not see or hear me, but he could still remain in the hangout and converse with uh, uh, Doug and Shelton. Okay. But then when, of course, you know, we got up to 10 people. When three people blocked George, it would kick him out of the hand. See, that makes sense. That, that's a, that's a, that's a yeah. good. And then I've got Google Enterprise through NC State University, and I can make it to where only NC State employees can be on the Google Hangout, or I can make it to where the public can be on the Hangout. So uh, Google has even got enterprises that companies and organizations have that allow them to use the hangouts too as well, which and, is pretty and, neat. And, and listen, I, I've been dry, dying to get this in here. I've been trying to work it in. I haven't got this. I, I'm just going to say it. Zoom.us. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if you will try Zoom.us, it's not free. It is not a free video chatting service, but it is the best quality video I've ever mm -hmm. seen in my life. I, I don't know what kind of backbone those guys are running, but I, this is honest truth. The first time that I was in it and the guy went to share his desktop, I thought it was my desktop. It's the best. Zoom is I, the best. Zoom, Zoom will kick everyone we've talked about's ass. I, I mean, uh, they they were they were a startup probably two years ago. And, and I mentioned Bruce Turner earlier. Bruce actually has an account with them and uses them through his business. And and I'm I'm telling you, if you want to experience high quality video chat, check out. It's well, what's a, the point? What's the point? Well, like the, what do you who what are people using it for? A lot of businesses are using it. Bruce uses it. He's got a he actually does an online Bible study, and uses it with his Bible uh, group. And and you know they're they're sharing a lot of desktops and screens and documents, so forth, etc. All right, so, so think uh, about it from a business perspective. You're, you're, you're ABC Corporation. It doesn't matter what you are. You're ABC Corporation. Doug's desktop blows up. It doesn't matter what OS operating system he has. His desktop blows up. He, and he basically needs somebody to go in and look at it remotely to see what he clicked on wrong to, to make his clock go to Pacific time or something, and he can't figure it out. Okay? So basically, he, not only can he talk to the guy and look at him, but that guy can go into his desktop and take over and fix stuff or tell him how to fix it. But that's a niche product. I mean, obviously it is a niche product, but the, the video quality, the quality of it. The video quality. Okay. You've been in hangouts. The hangout quality is way better than here. I got to tell you that yeah. much right yeah. now, way better than here. That video quality is like watching a Blu-ray movie. <laughs> so, you know, if you have the camera for it, you gotta have it. Oh, yeah, you have to have the camera for it, obviously. Well, yeah, yeah, you can't have like some. Well, you know, it, listen, I mean, cameras, you okay. can buy you can buy HD cameras now for you know forty fifty dollars. So, it's, yeah. get a uh, from a five twenty five to a nine thirty or forty. Where they get now? Hey, but, yoga. To be I, honest with you, I think that if Blab is successful and takes off, someone will buy them. Yeah, I mean, I that, how would good. you? That brings the question. How would you implement Blab into Facebook? That I mean, that's is a. I, that, I think it's 
I personally think it's going to be interfaced into Twitter. It's pointing towards okay, Twitter. Okay, well, well, Twitter-ish. Well, let, let's address both of those scenarios. How okay. is, how With Twitter, how specifically would you interface it with the current Twitter uh, UX? All right. Well, first of all, Twitter does have its own sort of video kind of. But that's that's point. that's just for like Instagram kind of. Uh, no, it's just for the Insta thing. So they don't really have like every other format. W- Facebook has a video client. Google has a video client. Twitter has just a I can say something for thirty seconds in video and it's out there. Um, this right now, the first thing they did, it's not interfaced with Facebook any way, shape, or form. It's interfaced right with Twitter. So everything is now interfaced with Twitter. All your Twitter followers drop down if they have a Blab account and you're now following them in Blab. So that that was done on purpose somehow. Okay. So it does a quick interface with Twitter. Uh, it even kind of has a Twitterish look to it. Okay, so but I'm gonna, I'm but gonna how say would you this is geared how would you towards being a Twitter it? product. How would you interface yeah. it on an app, like an individual basis with? I wouldn't. I would leave it the way it is and oh, just so put you, a Twitter handle on oh, it. Oh, so you wouldn't right. actually make it so you interface. It would probably directly. become Blab a Twitter product. <laughs> okay. Okay. Hey, that's, I, so I so shall, you, you? Yes, sir. If if Facebook was to buy it, I would see them imp, uh, implementing it through their uh, messaging service. So you where, just, you'd be able to have four people in a message in a group. Yeah. group. Okay. Yeah, they, they, well, uh, yeah, it's not unheard of for a company to buy a similar product to what they have and then trash their own or integrate it into their own. And I thought that the that the uh, app on Facebook was a third party anyway. They don't uh, own that. They don't own that app. They didn't they didn't used to. I know that when it first came out, it was a they 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 had got they had uh, gone out to get uh, sort. They had outsourced it. Yeah, I think that uh, what, you know, you're talking about, you know, right now we're using Blab and, and we basically got the ability to put four people in here. It's called Face Face. Yeah, it's called Face Face. Let's, let, let's not forget that, uh, you know, uh, with, with Google Hangouts, right now you can have 10 people in a room or if you're like Doug, if you, you know, if you're using some sort of a business or enterprise account, you can have up to 15. I think Zoom that I was mentioning earlier, I, I think they're up to like 25 now to where literally you could have a video conference with 25 people in different parts of the world. Mm-hmm. So, so I mean, this, this four person limitation isn't exactly a limitation that's always going to be here for Blab. Yeah. Okay, that's okay. Yeah. But four people is quite manageable. I mean, it's, it's an easy, manageable kind of system for people. Um, but I, uh, again, I, uh, I'm a newspaper person, so I think of it as from a news standpoint. And I see this a, is a great way, like if if Facebook integrated it so that they could have, or anybody, Twitter for that matter, integrated it so that you could have newsmaker, newsmaker, interviewer or newsmaker 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 interviewer and you would that would pop up in your news feed then that would revolutionize news distribution because that that cuts out the middleman when it comes to facebook i mean it comes out uh, when it comes to uh cnn because you know they could they could just have an anchor or hell they could just find somebody that was a good interviewer that was a facebook member and get them to interview uh newsmakers there you go. Yeah, yeah. And I, I just want to reply, hey, Fergan R, uh, you know, uh, you uh, you don't necessarily have a conversation with 25 people. You might just have, you know, so many talking at, at certain times. Yeah, it's just like in Hangouts now. You got 10 people in a room. 10 people can't talk all at the same time. Mm-hmm. You know, everybody's got to kind of take their turn and uh, in some cases pick their battles. Exactly. But – but the di- like people are so used, to, and I apologize for, for keeping talking about this, but that's that's mm-hmm. my background is newspapers and me- yeah. media. Uh, this could revel if it, if it just whatever it went ma- if it went mainstream and and critical mass, especially with something like Facebook or something where 
something whereby you you had it a system whereby you didn't have to have a professional interviewer and you got interesting people from Facebook to talk to each other about something and that showed up in your news feed irregardless if you were friends with them or not that that would be pretty powerful don't you think if that was popping up in your news feed on a regular basis and you could just like watch it what do you think no, i don't know i i I'm... it sounds like a podcatcher to me you know like an rss feed type thing i mean stuff like that kind of already exists in different forms say as an example you you had a specific uh news a criteria you were looking at, right? So I, I can cater, say, like news.google.com to show me what I want to see. I want to see nothing but tech news as an example. Or I want to yeah. see headline news or whatever. Um, but you can also tweak some RSS feeds um, the way you want them. So you can sit there and say, okay, I just want to see this type of news. And I want to see it from these five sources. And it'll, you know, if you get the right RSS feed, uh, a software that feeds it to you, but it will, or even uh, a web entity. There's a lot of web entities that do that for you too. What um, I thought. Hey, hey, Shelton, have you, uh, yes. have you watched uh, yes. HuffPost Live? No, sir, I have not. Uh, check it out. I think they're doing some really cool things with how they do video. And yeah. uh, they're, they're implementing, I, I don't know if it's Google Hangouts or Skype or how they're conducting their interviews. But it's it's actually pretty slick, and they they'll get you know like three or four people in at a time, uh, you know a lot of political topics. Uh, they they've got a pretty slick setup. I really like what they're doing live. Well, yeah, I always thought what that, this this would be good for is if you had a moderator, uh, like for me, a specialist from NC State University uh, or two. And then you had one seat left to where people could pop in and out and ask questions about something. And then those people then could react to that question or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I that think, I think you're work. right. I think if you had a moderator like yourself and then two experts and then, a, and then your third your fourth person could be just anybody, that that might be very workable. Right. But once again, that's that I think. What? You've got once again that that takes uh, that takes some planning. It's it takes a uh, you know a script. Uh, you've got to kind of plan for it because I know uh, Duke, you do the you, you do the sheets for tech and coffee for the uh, for Android Journal, and you all have to work on that to to have the podcast. Basically, it's not something you you can go in and do basically well, yeah and see that that's another cool thing I, and i am I, i'm a google, google fanboy i mean I, I i will gladly admit it but that's the cool thing with docs we can you know i can open up a, a spreadsheet and populate it for the android journal podcast yeah and and basically when we go live the whole panel has access to that sheet all the hyperlinks that i've embedded and and uh you know, we're, we're able to work off that sheet and edit it, you know, live time. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, that would be nice, you know, if Blab had that sort of ability to be able to, uh, uh, you, you know, to where you could share documents like that. Doug and Shelton, yeah, know what I'm going to say here in a second, but we can keep up with the Cardonians if we show our cats. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's a blab so, thing. <laughs> I have a, I have a question, Duke. Uh, and I apologize if I should know this, but don't. So you can you or can you not share documents in a uh, hangout? Yeah. Oh yes, you yes. can. You can absolutely. Okay, see that that's a very powerful feature. Yeah. And if this service had that, that would be a great feature. Because I love Google Google Docs. Well, I'm a huge fan. I'm a huge fan of Google Docs. I would like run anything I ever did off Google Docs. Um, but if like this, if you could like, because then, then you could do an enterprise version of this and, and make money. Well, it'd be nice well, to have side cool. documents and presentations you can show across the screen, especially if you brought. That's documents. absolutely true. And you absolutely can do that. Hang out. You've been able to do that for years. This, you can't. So. Well, well, the cool thing about Google Docs, though, is you could use it against Blab. I mean, you know. Pit, you could. Pit, 
pick how you want to use Blab, but you can still open up a Google Doc. Yeah. You can share that doc with. The, That's true. You could share it and look at it that way. Yeah, I mean, it's just not integrated. No, and you're right, Shan. Shan VP says it's not actually meant. It's meant as a as a way of putting yourself out there in public and in talking. Um, it's but not meant. But everybody corrupts things for the enterprise. I mean, hell, people have been putting Max in the enterprise for thirty years. So you know, um, it's the same way. People are going to figure out some way to use this for the enterprise, even though it's not designed for the enterprise. Very true. True. Very true. I mean. I, we don't know what the plan is for this. I don't see a direct monetization back to whoever developed it. Um, I'm not sure if it, it, it's something that's developed to be sold off. It looks like it's integrated for Twitter pretty easily. So Twitter might be a possible client to buy something like this and Twitterize it. Um, other things like Facebook and Google already have video clients. So I don't see unless they're going to buy it and, and, and somehow, you know, morph it into their own stuff. I, so, so you guys tell me, I mean, I, I've kind of been hearing just in the last couple of weeks, you know, this thing called Blab. And, you know, I, I know George has been doing a few and, and I've been coming over and checking out. Uh, how, how old is Blab? I mean, how old is this service? Has it been, been around a while? Or? Well, it's in beta. Uh, uh, George said it's been around for three months, I think, right? I think it's been around for three months, but it's actually, I think it's only been super live or pushed out there. Um, for the last month and change, if I'm not mistaken, I don't know the exact uh, the time frame, um, but I only learned about it uh, a little over a week ago when Keith Milner came in and uh, showed it to me. And then we did our first well, lab and we had the CTO come in and ask us to record it because they wanted to, the CEO well, apparently is into Linux. And we were talking how Linux sucks. So, I mean, Linux uh, beats Windows ads, which is going to suck. Well, I, yeah, it does. Linux definitely beats Windows ass. Yeah, it well, definitely it does. Ass. So, I, I'm, he, saying, I'm a, a multi. The CEO yeah, is a Linux guy, so the, the yeah. CTO popped in and said, "Hey, could you record this? Because he might want to see it." And I'm like, "Okay." <laughs> hey, that was hey, our first blab whatsoever. So, so, so uh, Shane VP, he's asked a question, and uh, uh, listen, hey, hey, Doug. You think Blab is more consumer oriented or is it enterprise oriented? I think right now it's more consumer oriented. Okay. Well, what what yeah. do you what do you think, Shelton? I I think it's like I said, I think if it becomes a success, then it will be a moot point because everybody many yeah. people will say they'll be like, Why do I have to pay for anything? Why can I have to pay for any video conferencing? I just use Blab. Like, I mean, that's what, because I, I am a sort of a entrepreneur myself, even though not a very successful one. And, you know, when you don't have any money and you're just starting out, you're like, well, there's this thing called Blab, like, and we can, and technically we could theoretically get around, we don't have to buy the enterprise Google Docs, we can just use Blab and then share the docs on, or, you know, whatever, like, what I'm saying is if you're, if you have, if you're a little bit creative, you could figure out a way to get around having to pay for the enterprise yeah. version of a product. Does sure. that make sense? Yeah, sure. Well, like that's what that, that's what I would do. I would just say I'm not paying for anything. <laughs> no, I'm going to say one thing I've noticed about Blab because I was in a 48 hour thing in this, and and somehow Luke got me stuck doing it for about two and a half hours while he had his freaking Wi-Fi failing on him. But um, Blab is addictive. I mean, I was supposed to go out on a photo shoot and just hang out with some friends and shoot up a freaking graveyard. You know what the freak happened? Uh, he sucked me in to this blab and I kept looking. I'm like, dude, I got to go. He goes, Oh, George, you can go any minute now. And then he disappeared. And I'm like, and I felt responsible. Like I had to stay in this thing. And I'm like, okay, I got to go. I got to go eventually. And every time I did it, three, four hours went by. I'm like, okay, my day's just gone. I'm just, I might as well just, I ended up going to the farmer's market. But, 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 I, but, I, but my you know, question I, is, I hate, I hate to keep talking about the same subject, but it's so interesting to me. Why, what's the, is there any thing that you would say, okay, that's the moment when it hits the mainstream or becomes critical mass? Because I know the president did a Google Hangout and nothing happened. So what, what would make this go mainstream? Well, hey, hmm. uh, let, let me get, let me give you a, a counter example. You ever used Vine? No, I've used it like once. Okay. And, I, and you, it was kind of like, you know, for about two months, that's all anybody could talk about. 
was doing a vine, doing a six, seven second video. Okay. And how these vines just, I, I mean, literally people were piecing this stuff together to make these little mini movies. I don't know anybody that gives a nickel about vine anymore. Okay. <laughs> You're right. But now the point that I'm the point the, the counterpoint that I'm trying to make what you said is it can be hot today and nothing tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I just I just feel this has such potential because they're doing what Google should have done. This is like I I, I hate to because I I'm kind of like old and have like and have studied stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, Microsoft totally destroyed IBM even though there were the even though there were the OS2 fanboys I know it's kind of uh, there around that time <laughs> I, and I remember so what I'm saying is a a a uh, even though Google has a great product Google is huge and it, it maybe is so huge that it does it can't its mind can't grapple with the idea of okay there's this product that there's a demand for we should just make it like that thing yeah and so and so this service it has a great name by the way uh yeah actually that's the, what dragged me it, in too it's like what is that it, it's a it's a swift-footed uh a swift-footed uh entrepreneurial startup it may just go boom and get really popular really fast and then either it will be bought or it will do what I think it should do. It's just to stay its own thing. Well, I'm going gonna, gonna to tell you what this does that say Meerkat and Periscope doesn't do. A, you can use it on a PC and I can use the other two on a PC, but I can view them and that's it. This I can yeah. interact. So um, I, you can do a mobile too, which is cool. You can do both. But um, the reason why I like that better is because I have mixer boards and high quality bikes and cameras you know i mean my phone is good but <laughs> i mean okay I mean, so the found one of the founders of live wants to join so i i one of us needs to leave <laughs> okay I, I'll, I'll be more than happy to back out i'm gonna back out and let shane pop okay. in hey shane okay shane when you get yeah. here i'm interested <laughs> in here. i can pop in. what 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 what's your plans on monetizing this? I mean, I see no advertising now. Uh, uh, yeah, hey, I just uh, that that's my question. Tell me about how uh, Blab is going to monetize itself and grow in the future. Hey guys, I've enjoyed this very much. Y'all have I, a good I, I, yes, I love having thank, you. In thank here, you for your I'll see thank you for your time. Sir. <laughs> hey, hey Shelton, great to meet you and come yes, on. Yes, sir. Click on coffee dot info. Click on the coffee cup. <laughs> Yeah, yes, sir. On, yes, on, sir. Thank you very much. Join Tech and Coffee. We love you. Uh, come on in, uh, Shen. Doug's at the control, so he, he could be evil. Don't be evil, Doug. But I've accepted. Okay. Here he comes. Here he comes. What's going on, guys? How are you? Uh, we're Just good. fine. How are you? Uh, you know, you're under the criticism of the evil overlord here. <laughs> yes, the evil overlord <laughs> is there. Aren't you supposed to be petting the kitty? I do. And I've been feeding him treats all night. He just keeps wanting to, to come up to me. It's, it's just, um, I don't know. I'm ever, well, there's a long story with uh, my wife passed away a couple months ago. So the cat's kind of always around me. I'm sorry to hear that. But, That's okay. Um, guys, I was, I was enjoying the conversation. I thought I would jump in and answer any questions you might have or, or kind of. And you're a Linux guy. I love you already. No, no, I don't know where this rumor started. I'm not, I'm not a Linux. I'm not a technical guy at all. The came and said, you love Vaughn with that. Whatever. So here's the CTO. He can he can tell you straight from the source. Did you you hey, came George in one day when we were doing a Linux thing, and you said this guy loves Linux. Record this. Yeah, we we had a conversation. I told you I'm a Linux guy. <laughs> oh, you're a Linux guy. Okay, yeah. forget it then. Okay. I've been I've been listening to you guys here as well. well what's your distro, man? Uh, honestly, I started on Slackware, and then I used Gentoo, and I've used Ubuntu and Debian and kind of everything. So um, well, I'm, I'm using Mint over. and OpenSUSE. So. Yeah, I'm all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. As we all should be. <laughs> okay, this is this is my my uh, suggest one of my suggestions, and uh, I mentioned it before, uh, and I don't know how practical it is. And, and uh, Douglas had said that 
Google did something like this before. You need a system whereby you have experts and they would be they would be pingable in the system. So like you would designate someone as an expert, and then if a, there was breaking news, they would be said you would say, Okay, we need you, and ping, 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 and those people would meet and have a discussion, and then we could like that would like destroy CNN. Right. That's my opinion. No, no, no. I, I think that's interesting. <laughs> I mean, when right I talk to the, the team, coffee people are like uh, throwing this all over Twitter right now. So. I, I have this. I have this photo that's basically the CNN kind of you know the, the the talking heads right the split screen thing that they do, and I basically I, I sent it to the team. I said, why should these guys have all the fun, right? Because yeah, exactly. <laughs> because and, and and having the expert designation would allow that to happen easily. Uh, yeah, so so the, my only problem with that is basically people, people, especially important people who have you know very busy schedules, you know they protect their time very wisely, and they would be getting pinged all day. If you ever look at the Twitter mentions for anybody who's influential, they're just getting pinged all day. So what I want to do instead is I'm showing people the what this tool can do for them, how they might use it, and I want to build a habit within them where they think to themselves, oh, when this happens. I don't need to wait for CNN or ESPN or whoever it is to call me. I can go on there and I can actually have my own voice right there. What if you did a, a populist kind of system whereby the average per, like you could have some sort of like it's like you know we're getting where we're getting like that people are saying claps or whatever. If you got enough claps and you had a and you were an expert into something, then you're just an average person and you might get a ping. Do you do you guys use way. Quora? Oh, I've heard of it, but I don't use it. So, so Quora basically is a is a question and answer site, but it's kind of prides itself on being a little more sophisticated than Yahoo Answers. And they have this system, which is you can ask a question, but then you can basically ask someone specifically to answer it. So you can ping them to answer it. Um, and it, it for some reason it seems great on paper, but it doesn't work very well. And on most of these social platforms, sorry, I'm going to move away from some of the sound. Um, on most of these social platforms like Twitter and whatnot. If you build the habit, if you actually add value to that person's life, they will come and do it for you voluntarily. Without yeah, you that's true. That's true. So that's what we want to try off the bat, which is can we build a product that adds value to them and you know they enjoy using to the point where they want to show up? And so like, yeah, that makes sense. It's just I, I there's just a way like I just feel like there's some way to cut through the clutter of all these people talking. It must be some way to sort of say okay, these people there's. There's an explosion somewhere. These people are experts in that specific topic, and they may not be the traditional talking head, right. but they're, they're, they live in that community. They know what's going on. Right. We're going to ping them, and they can you – know. You know, I think, that, I think that's a good sentiment. The, the, I, would, I would just say like the idea of us picking who, who's the, who are the right people to talk about this is kind of – goes back to the very thing we're trying to disrupt, which is that kind okay, of top okay, down, that's fine, that's fine. you know, the TV thing. So what I want is to build in the tools so that people can restream or basically tell their followers, hey, these are the guys to talk about or that are talking about whatever issue is going on or whatever just happened and say, this is where the credible source is for this issue right now. Or, hey, I'm enjoying this conversation right now between maybe these three guys who I've never heard of, but being able to spread the word more organically rather than us saying, these are the experts in every category because if we do that, we're just like a television channel. Well, I guess I, I, I apologize for monopolizing the conversation. I apologize. Uh, it just seems like I, I understand where you're coming from, but wouldn't it be good to kind of sort of you know, do a wink and a nod to the TV model a little bit in the sense that you would say that like if, for example, there's an explosion in my backyard, and there's it's becomes a trending topic on Twitter. And then everybody on this on Blab that was in that area would get a ping saying, "Go to Blab," and that you're there. We want to hear what you have to say. And then then the system can you know yeah no, that's use a, good that's a great idea yeah that's a great okay, idea that's, obviously eventually okay, as as the thing <laughs> spreads right as as we get bigger. <laughs> Okay, I'll shut up now. Thank you. Uh, no, 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 do shut up. I like it. I mean, w w the reason I'm jumping in on these is not to 
tell you guys how it is. I want to hear from you what your ideas are. That doesn't mean I'll always do it, but I think that's the <laughs> that, that's the point. And listen, I think a lot. I'd of like to hear from this. George and Douglas. <laughs> Actually, he reminded me. There, there's a good friend of mine who's um who's a uh, who who plays um a, a local uh, a bar I go to or restaurant, and uh, he takes requests, but he always says, "Well, I'll take a request. Doesn't mean I'll play it." <laughs> so. So in essence, uh, yeah, and my cat is basically loving Blab right now. But um, I'm, I, I, Blab is very addictive. I'll give it that. And I, and, and I love it um, in essence because I totally – I like Meerkat, but I'm not really a Meerkat fan. I like some of the people in Meerkat. I like, like the Funky Fairy, stuff like that. I'll watch them. Um, I became friends with Rob. In fact, I'll probably um, – I'm going to be in London – uh, early November, so I'll probably meet up with him and maybe get a coffee or something. Um, but uh, this is seriously addictive. I'll be in a hangout all day because I'm at work, and it, that's kind of like the same eight to ten people I hang out with every day. But um, this on the side, I come over here and I pimp out tech and coffee a little bit, but then I start talking to people, and and it's kind of cool. Um, uh, I've I've hung out with. Uh, just a bunch of people here and, and I've actually made a few new friends and Doug, Doug's one of our tech and coffee. Right? So, you know, he, he had well, this going on. I said, Oh, let me hop in. And I was about to just do nothing for the night. Right. <laughs> we, we changed the chair. name of our group. Sir, sir. Hide the name what's, of your, the group. <laughs> what's your vision as opposed to uh, hangouts? What's your vision for this site as relative to hangouts? I don't even think about it relative to Hangouts. I, I mean, I have no idea what their vision was. I think, I think it's apples and oranges. Like I keep saying, it's two different things. Yeah. Hangouts has its little niche, and, and, and it's kind of more of a hidden thing within Google. I mean, it's, it's getting out there a little bit, but it's not. It's a chat client that they integrated into Google. This is its own thing, and this is more like a... More, it, it's, it's like Meerkat on Acid, except you, know, you can put four people in here, a bunch of people can talk. And it's more to me. This is more addictive than any of those have ever become. And I, I kind of didn't like them. <laughs> you know, I like Meerkat to watch and two or three people, but I don't think I could ever just sit there and throw a selfie stick up and go, "Oh, you know." It's like, right. Well, uh, let me let me start by I'll tell you the vision part first, and then I'll separately talk about the difference, right, right, between Hangouts and what we do. So the vision for us is is pretty simple, honestly. Is that what if we created a conversation platform? So if we took the idea that um, you could be a fly on the wall, no matter where you are in the world, to the most interesting conversation to you, right? So if we're talking about Linux, there's going to be people who love Linux, and in their neighborhood, there'll be nobody that loves Linux just like George does over here, right? So can he access, can we, can we get away from geography and biography and let you access people and ideas that are super relevant to you, right? I have like five interests that I'm irrationally into, right? For mm -hmm. me, it's, it's startups. It's basketball, it's poker, right? I have these hobbies where I can't get enough content. And when I meet like-minded people, it doesn't matter where they're in the world, I find that their experiences are so similar to me or maybe they're experts and I want to learn from them or, I want, or they're funny and I want to be entertained from them, but in this field. So the vision for us was pretty simple. It was, look, there's never going to be able to be a TV channel for, all, for every niche, right? But each niche, if you add them all up, that's a really big deal. There's a great stat that like, Amazon basically makes more revenue off of books that Barnes and Noble doesn't even hold. It doesn't even have the shelf space for, right? Because this long tail, like the niche content that's not worth putting up on the shelf because it's not mainstream enough, if you add it all up, it's pretty powerful. And I just thought the same thing will happen for TV where, you know, if we want to talk about tech or we want to talk about Linux, we want, you're never going to be able to turn on the TV and get a channel for that. You're never going to, it's never going to happen because the way their cost structure is set up, it's impossible. They have to pay for content. They have to produce it. They have to ha hit the lowest common denominator or kind of the mass market with everything they, they, that they do. Whereas all mine, the users create the content and we can have as many blabs going at, at once. We don't have you know, one show per channel per, you know, per 30 minutes or whatever. So I just thought to myself, okay, the really disruptive technologies, the things that really flip something on its head, they basically, they don't go into a knife fight with a sharper knife. They go in with a magic wand. And what I mean by that is they go in and they just play the game by different rules. So if you look at Airbnb, right, pretty big, big business now, a startup that's grown quite rapidly, 
the reason that they like a Air- unicorn, a unicorn, and more than that, a decacorn, right? So the reason Airbnb is worth twenty billion dollars or whatever it is now, the reason it can actually book more nights than all of Hilton hotels combined in one day, is because they have a different cost structure, right? The users put up the rooms so they can scale instantly, right? They just play by different rules, thus they can have different results. But they're still solving just a fundamental problem, which in their case is, where do I find a place to stay tonight? In our case, it's, where do I go to see what other people think or are saying about this thing that I'm really into, right? This topic that I'm really into. Can I, may I interrupt for just a moment? Please do. Okay. I, I think it's a great vision. I, I, and it's admirable and I support it. And I, I this, this is way too addictive. The only thing I, the only weakness is you're kind of like enforcing the, 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 the society of the users to decide who is worth looking at. So if this, if these little, you know, numbers meant something, maybe they do, I don't know about it. If the, if you were like to say, okay, you get, you have a thousand points, then you are featured. Right. That would be a way of, of maybe cutting through the, the, the morass of, of people that were not doing what you wanted to do. So, so you guys know we have to find a way to figure out what's good, what's bad, right? Because if there's five yeah. things talking about the same thing, we want to surface the best. Um, and we, we don't want to decide the best. We don't want to be editors. But the way we, we, t- we do it is, yeah, each one of those fields is a signal, right? It's a, little, it's a little signal to us that says this is valuable content, that people are enjoying this. Every time people comment in the chat, that's a signal saying, hey, this is an engaging blab. The users are really responding to it. The number one signal we have, and it's, all, you know, it's obviously a combination of these, these different uh, variables, but the number one signal is how long are people watching it for? Because if you're tuning in, if you continue to spend your currency, which is time, watching something, then we believe that it's valuable. And so we float that stuff to the top. And we, Okay, we that, that answers my question. It's not super sophisticated yet, but that's where it's going and that's what it's going to be. Mm-hmm. Uh, the gentleman before uh, Duke Carico asked us to ask you about your plans for monetizing the product. I believe was that what he said, George? Yes, it yes. is. To ask that question, do you what, do y'all have plans for that at this point? Or sure, I mean we we want this to be a business someday, but it, I mean we're still in beta, so we're not even launched right. yet, right? right uh, so right. it's like asking a toddler, like, what are you going to do when you grow up? And they're going right. to say, like, I want to be a dinosaur, like. My answer today is just as valid as, as saying I want to grow up to be a dinosaur. Um, I think, like, from, from my perspective, I don't think we're going to go down that enterprise route if I'm going to give you my best guess. Um, I think what will end up happening is that we take the fact that, hey, already right now, there are people watching hours and hours of content. I mean, the average user is watching 65 minutes of Blab a day, which is just insane. That's average. That includes people who just pop in and out, right? And so when we look at that we say man we're going to have a lot of attention people looking at you know these videos and and that's the live stuff there's also the replays right so um mm-hmm. if i couldn't catch this conversation in in the future the replay is going to be much more popular because it's obviously much more convenient for people to watch so i can see us doing like I mean, you know almost like a youtube does a, a little pre-roll ad or a video ad in one of these squares where you know for the for, before you watch the replay for example you can you could see an ad there so we're going to find a way to monetize it. But the good thing is in consumer internet, right? The business we do, there's been enough people that have proven the model of, hey, grow, 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 find out how to make money later, that we get the benefit of not of getting to punt on the business question for a while. Now, some people don't like that, but that's the reality of it where you want to grow a really big audience first. How difficult Thank it would you. be to, to, to monitor what we were saying and then put ads relative to that? Like to, for their, for like if I mentioned baby right. then 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 right here a baby ad comes up i mean over the weekend i was in san diego and i was in a car with a guy who's built two ad tech companies and he basically was as he was telling me how much goes into their ad tech platform i was like man it's a set it's sad that we have the most brilliant people working on the most boring stuff uh so i'm sure if you were thinking about babies that we could show you an ad for a baby i'm confident i'm just i'm just saying if i'm talking about it then that would be a great way to monetize the service because then that would be the conversation that was going on. Right. Like, I mean, like I said, I know it's technically possible, but there's also a choice of would we want to do that? And okay, I'm just curious. I'm just curious. Are, are there plans to use this platform in an educational type setting? 
Um, yeah, over. this this morning I jumped in on a blab that was happening. It was uh, let me teach you how to speak Cantonese, and there was just one person. Oh in yeah, I saw, I saw that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was two other people just learning how to actually make the sounds and the tones and getting feedback on that. And I just thought, oh, how cool is this, right? Like, we haven't even built in any of any special features for education, but people, right. will, you know, to your point earlier, people will find a way if they say, hey, this is easy to use and there's people on here. Right. They'll find a way to shoehorn their mission into this product. I'm learning how to speak Cantonese. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I'm not because I have no clue what he's saying. <laughs> so, where do you see this service in five years? Uh, the five year question. Um, yes. I hope. I hope, and this is what I've told Azim. I said I honestly believe that this that blabbing is going to be bigger than blogging. I think that there's going to be people sharing ideas, trading thoughts and opinions on what's going on in the world about what they know best. And the reason I believe it's going to be bigger than blogging is nothing against blogging. I love blogging. I love reading blogs and writing blogs myself. But there's a pretty high bar to do that. You got to sit down. You got to make time. You got to write. You got to have the writing skill. You got to feel confident in what you wrote that it's coherent and you know compelling. And you got to figure out how to set up a blog and all that. And I just think people coming in and having conversations is just a much lower bar. Like George was saying earlier, even streaming on Meerkat, where you are a selfie, you're just one person being an entertainer, it's a totally different dynamic than joining a conversation like this and just feeling like, hey, you can just be a part of the flow and not saying, look at me, here I have something to say. So, Sheldon, you got a counterpoint? Yeah, I, I keep. I'm so sorry. I'm a reporter. I apologize. I, I, I that, That's just my nature. If I get somebody like you, I'm going to ask you questions. Don't worry. It's boring um, if you just agree with me. <laughs> okay. So, okay. I just, I'm just, I'm just trying to be polite, and I don't want you to think I'm interrogating you. I'm just saying it's my nature to ask questions because I have a new, newspaper background. Um. So the question is, it seems like you want the because a society will develop around this service because we're, we're social beings and we're humans. It seems like you want us to decide who's worth talking to. And I feel you, you through algorithms or whatever, it wouldn't really be that big a deal to just suggest that this person is a little bit more credible and you should like go to that hangout and then when you're monetizing things, you could put an ad because more people would be looking at it. So you have a vested interest in at least suggesting that that person who happens to have a bomb explode in his backyard, he is more – you should follow that lab. Yeah, no, we're on the same page with that. I think uh, when I say that the people will vote with their time, that doesn't mean that we won't – we won't be sorting things based off of that. I mean, everything that the users do is a signal to us for our algorithm to say, to suggest which blab you should watch right now. What is the most entertaining thing or the most entertaining thing within this category? So our algorithm okay, well, give, will give do me, that. Give me, your, give me your case study of uh, New York marathon, the bomb goes off. What happens in blab? So here's what I think will happen. I think in that moment that somebody will spin it up so somebody will, will push a button and say, bombing at the New York City Marathon, they're live on the scene right now, right? And this will happen on Periscope. Yeah. This will happen on Twitter. This will happen in many places where people will say – how does your doing. service handle it? So the, the, what I believe that where we add value is somebody coming in and answering questions, somebody coming in and having a conversation. It's the hot take, right? It's basically yeah. people giving their opinion or – updating people on the situation live and in real time um, and in depth. So some people will only want the summary, but for people who want to follow the story, people who want it, people who get attached to it, they don't want it to end. And I think because the power will be in the hands of a consumer, they won't have to, you know, if you're on TV, you're going to, you're going to devote some segment of your time to it. And then the station has to move on. Right. Um, whereas on blab, you're going to be able to spin that up and you're going to have people, two or three people jumping in. You're going to have a paramedic jumping in and explaining to the viewers what this protocol would be in this situation. He might not be a paramedic on the field, on the field there, but it's like calling in an expert for an interview in instantly, right? Somebody will say, Hey, I but have something to add here. But how do you get that here. person on there to begin with? That's the question I have. Well, our job is to build a giant community, right? A giant audience of people yeah. so that when something happens, like in this chat right here, I said, 
hey guys, I'm you know I'm one of the founders of Blab, but you know happy to join the combo if it if it helps. And then somebody else said, yeah, get this guy in here, and you jumped off, and I got in right. In the same way, when something happens, uh, people will be able to uh, to actually say, hey, I've got so I got something to add to this conversation, or I'm in the chat and I'm I'm actually adding something. The host will say, hey Joseph, would you want to jump in? You know, I can see, I can look at your Twitter profile right here I, as I hover over you. I can see that you're a fireman. What do you think is going on here, right? So being able to uh, rally people around things that are happening and actually have a conversation about it. I think that's the key to understand is that this is about conversation, whereas there's many other platforms that are just showing you what it, what it is, what it looks like. Here's a photo, here's a video, here's a live video of what's happening. That's about eyeballs. This is about conversation. Yeah. Well, that, I agree with you. It's just uh, I, I, the, I run scenarios in my mind all the time, and I'm trying to imagine if there's an explosion in New York City or where, wherever, how does your system – why would I come here to want to see what people had to say? What distinguishes this from, say, Periscope where there might be people on the ground – Totally. Just showing different angles of the same thing. They're just sitting there going, this is what's happening. Right. What makes this service unique? So to be honest, I mean, just running with the scenario that you gave, I think Periscope would be the, the app I would open up. If I was on the ground there, I would open up Periscope for that. Why? Because something crazy visual just happened and I would want to show people what's going on. Yeah. An hour later, I'd want to jump on Blab to actually hear what do people think about that, right? I don't need the news. I want to know the meaning of the news. I want to know what people f are feeling about it. I want to know what interesting people who have relevant experience are going to be saying about it. So it wouldn't actually be in that case. It wouldn't be a. Um, it wouldn't be the case where oh, there's a fire right in front of me. I want to use Blab to broadcast that. That's not what Blab is for. It's for the conversation an hour later or the conversation happening in parallel from people who are not on the scene, but have something to say or I want to track the story or want to you know keep people updated just like you do from a news desk. Now, I have to ask, have you started have you tried to make any kind of uh, outreach to the media world? Um, luckily for us, we basically we did a little bit of outreach at the very beginning and then things started just rolling for us. So we were very fortunate that no, we, I'm saying participate participation on the part of journalists. Yeah, on blab. Yes. So, so there are journalists who participate on Blab, but not on behalf of their of their TV studio or their newspaper. Oh, okay. So the, it's not like they're the representatives. They're right. Like, doing like, it. like we had we had some uh, really really sharp guys from Al Jazeera who were on, and they were saying, "Oh, you know, Al Jazeera is very actually like sort of forward thinking the way they they look at the media business." And they were on here brainstorming how they're going to use this and how they're going to embed it on their site and use it for those quick fire uh, conversations and kind of the the digital um, extension of everything that they showed on TV. So I'm curious to see what more and more people come up with, but it's not really our focus. Uh, honestly, um, people who are in traditional media are usually the last to give credit to something that it looks lower production value, cheaper, faster than what they're used to. And so um, if you look at the way most technology gets adopted, uh, the people who are already the incumbents will adopt it after they already see mass market people using it. Uh, yes. I, the only thing is that given the fact that Hillary Clinton has a Snapchat, that leads me to believe that it's possible in the 2016 election cycle that this will be significant. Like Blab, I, I believe personally that Blab, given right. the so, how slow Google is, that Blab could swoop in and do something really cool. Yeah, no, to totally. And, th and that would come on the on the – from the you know the campaign managers or the marketers behind it. That's what I'm talking about. Like campaign managers would say, okay, Bernie Sanders wants to have a blab on a regular basis. Like, could your servers handle uh, 200, 300,000 people wanting to do a blab with Bernie Sanders? Well, as you know, there's no way to know till it happens, right? <laughs> okay, I'm just curious. I'm just curious. <laughs> 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 I mean, I'm, I'm just saying because that that. Because that if you have such potential, I mean, you have such potential. It's just that's that's like when the the push comes to shove, of like when a major news person says, "Okay, I'm going to use Blab because I want to reach the masses." Right. I mean, these Bernie things, Sanders. This is perfect for Bernie Sanders. These things don't usually fail due to like technological limitations. It's usually just customers don't adopt it. Right. You can have 
all the stars you want. You can do lots of different marketing things. But if people, if this doesn't resonate with people and people don't adopt this as the place they go to hear these conversations, then that that's honestly such a higher risk thing for us. And the thing we focus most on that we, we don't even look at, um, we don't even look at like the, the technical load because it's not a problem until it's a problem and you can't really forecast it because the thing that's going to break at it, you know, a hundred thousand users on it at once is going to be something that we can't really foresee right now. It won't be the thing we we're assuming it will be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just, real, just real quick. Um, there's been some questions been asked, are there going to be uh, private blabs in the future? And, uh, uh, will they be more control over settings like being able to pick the webcam you're using uh, or those type of things in the future? Um, yes, on the webcam front. Um, on the private labs, it's just it's it's pretty far out for us right now. It's just not our focus. Like we okay. what we really really want to do is, is is nail the one thing. I think so many products okay. fail because they just try to do too much stuff and they have the features, but they're confused the hell out of everybody. And so one, having one story is really important for us now. And then, of course, as you get big, then you, can, then you can experiment. You can play around much more because you have the benefit of people being familiar with one thing. And then the rest is just an extension. It just opens up a few more use cases. Um, but but I, you know, so, so I would say that private is something that's completely not on our mind right now. Uh, mm -hmm. And to your other question about webcams, it is. Could kind of do what Google did with Hangouts for in the early days of Hangouts. They had two Hangouts. They had Hangouts with extras and a standard Hangout. The standard Hangout was a super easy one to use. The Hangouts with extras was ones the um, developers were always playing with. So you could conceivably be in the middle of one and all of a sudden the buttons change <laughs> or something because somebody just decided to fine tune it and add extra features to it while you right. were chatting at the time. Like I still don't know how to start a Hangout. I definitely don't know how to do a Hangout on air. I don't know where it goes. I, I don't know what's I happening. I go URL to get to ours. We're in there daily. Are you? Nice. <laughs> I will drop it at this side. <laughs> no, well, I, I have to say, this is much more simple. Like, this is a very simple, this is definitely simple and easy to use. And that's why I think you, it's it's very easy to adapt. Uh, it's just, uh, my only concern is when I was using it, I, I felt, I'm like, who should I look, who should I, you know, who should I, that didn't, there wasn't, there didn't seem to be any rhyme or reason to who to look talk to that's not that was my only concern uh, yeah, i mean it's definitely a challenge we have i mean if you're a new person coming on and you want to you want to talk about something uh we need to do a better job suggesting to people suggesting people to you who you could talk to that are that actually have an overlap and like to talk about that thing right it's great when you come in and you know each other and you say hey hey we should do a blab later and you just organize it offline and you you make it happen and um, there was no there was no tag for politics i noticed there's no tag for politics right now <laughs> there isn't. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there <it is. laughs> okay, I thought I was looking for politics, and I'm like, where is it? And it wasn't there. And there you go. <laughs> you know, it's it's politics is one of those divisive things. I think actually uh, is is a great tag. We honestly just we only put the tags in that we had already seen blabs for. So um, we didn't want you know as we ex we expanded it from one category, which was just technology when we first started, it was just tech, and then we added general. And then now we've added a whole slew of tags now, and you know we're open to adding more. But the, I mean, a bigger fear would be we have politics and it's empty. So until we knew that people are interested in actually having, you know, filling up that category with some action, uh, we don't want to add it because then, you know, you don't want to open a door to an empty room and say, oh, nothing here. Well, I, I just, I because the reason I even suggested is because radio experience, and I was like, that guy would be perfect for a politics uh, blab. So that's the only reason why I suggested it. Well, hey, Shelton, if you set up a politics blab and you're ready to do it if with this guy, <laughs> you just literally DM me on Twitter and we'll have a politics tag for you. I, I will I will I'd love to talk about uh, Bernie Sanders and so in like politics in general actually. But, but sure. I, I don't I don't have a, a, a radio background, I have a newspaper background, so I, I it's difficult for me to keep uh, fill airspace. Yeah. You you're doing fine. <laughs> I'm monopolizing the conversation. I feel sorry for these guys, but that's okay. I, I'm just gonna cry later. I'm be okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, well, thank you for talking to us. This is really cool. I mean, this I really cool. yeah. Thanks for dropping in here. That was the uh... thank you so much for talking to us. This is really uh, an honor. Uh, I, right. I'm... I think almost every tech and coffee I I know is just 
posted this all over Twitter. So you're just well, that's cool. No, I appreciate you guys trying it out. I know, I know you're probably like me. You see a thousand new things every day, and uh, and so for for us, we've worked on some of those things that get ignored, and this is one that luckily is not being ignored. It's being adopted. I give you kudos. I've never in in, in since 2011 had the CEO of Google drop in on our head. <laughs> <laughs> Thank hey, you for being with us. We appreciate thank it. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. I, I feel like when the CEO of Google drops in, he comes in in a helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got to work on my game. All right. All right, guys. Great talking to you. Yeah, that's thank cool. You. Thanks, man. Well, that was excellent. Uh, we yeah, that was. That, that was quite great. Yes. Somebody else jump in. Somebody else Somebody jump want in. to jump in? Anyone. Doug, Doug, Doug has in. the button. So, I mean, I have no control over this. As I mentioned earlier, I am. <laughs> Can, no can I give you control? <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> Come on, somebody jump in. Somebody jump in. We got 23 people. We can keep this going. There's got to be somebody here who wants to like. Come on, somebody else. Something. One other person. <laughs> Please. Apparently, no. Okay. Okay, everybody's going to leave now. Talk to you anymore, Shelton. It's all uh, over I'm, for you. Oh my! Uh, my career is finished. My career of. <laughs> So what do you no, guys think? I mean, uh, you know, um, it looks like it looks like they're just going to keep it bare bones, um, which is good. I mean, I think this is what it is. Um, and they got a focus and a vision, which is a good. focus and a vision. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we do have an open seat. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, somebody. Nobody wants those seats. The CEO said, and they were like, forget this. We don't want that seat. We don't. Cause I, I'm, well, let's talk. Let's talk about something. We gotta talk about something. We got. We're talk. talking about hangouts and blabs. We can change yeah, the topic. <laughs> <laughs> we done now, it before. Everyone's, right? everyone's leaing. Oh well. Everyone's leaving. Yeah, CEO's gone. <laughs> They're done with us. <laughs> yes. So, um, given what he said, what do you think? What do you guys think uh, is the future? Uh, well, it, what I was more or less saying all the time in essence I, I love blab is addictive i love blab i'm not i'm not even comparing blabs to hangouts or anything like i said it's apples and oranges um blab is very addictive the problem with blab with me is it's gotten to like hangouts i can walk away from because i know the same i'm talking to the same 20 30 people a day right so i can always go see you guys later and i'll see them later with blab if you're stuck in the middle of something and you're just kind of like you can't seem to get out of it it's almost like you know a drug so what, you were like, so what I, you I, kept looking. I was in a blab this morning i'm like i have work in 10 minutes luckily my <laughs> i work you know my work desk is next door <laughs> so i basically just have to scoot sideways but um you know i, I was just kind of like uh i, I had a i had a because you could just lose time in here really fast i mean I, I think I lost about four hours in here and I just kept meaning to go out and go on a photo shoot. And luckily it wasn't a paid photo shoot. <laughs> I would have been screwed. But, you know, it's just... Uh...